Good morning, good morning, good morning. Last night, <clears throat> I ne there was some information in the live stream that I need to clear up. And James, this is for you. One of the reasons that corporate citizens must move a certain way, I'm about to give you an example. Right now, you will hear about a Wyoming LLC and its charging order protections, all right? I'm about to give you an example, James. Let's say, James, that you were in Wyoming conducting business and you got drunk and you hit someone and you got sued in a Wyoming state court. The charging orders and stuff would apply. But let's go ahead and say, James, you're in Georgia, you're driving and you hit someone and you kill them and then they come after you and they sue you in a Georgia court, the charging orders will not apply. See, this is why I keep telling people to set up a corporation in your state, because here's the thing, and this is how the law works. There's something that's called venue and jurisdiction. And whoever has the jurisdiction, that jurisdiction laws apply. So. You got a Wyoming LLC for charging order protection. That charging order protection only applies in the state of Wyoming. Once you leave Wyoming, it doesn't apply. Then this is one of the things, like I'll give you an example. I could legitimately move my YouTube company and my consulting company to Florida and pay no state tax on that money because it's virtual. But my car business, I couldn't do that because it is physically located in Georgia and it has many points. I gotta have Georgia registration, I gotta have Georgia insurance, I gotta have an office, there, there's so many points. So there are many people who want to move or have their LLC in another state. Now I will talk about, uh, I did, I showed you guys, UPS. UPS, which is a multinational billion dollar, multi billion dollar company, when they moved to Georgia, they registered as a foreign entity. They did not move their LLC to Georgia. They left their LLC, not their LLC, they left their incorporation in Delaware and they went ahead and came to Georgia to operate as a foreign agent. They did not move their LLC because, you know, I, I got this comment like moving my LLC. Why would you want to move your LLC? I, I don't get it. It's like people want to do these fancy esoteric things before even uh, becoming good at the basics. And what are the basics? Getting customers. I don't care how good your articles of incorporation of your articles of organization and your Bible. I don't care how tight that is. If you don't have customers, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to make any money. So James, you need to move and conduct yourself as a corporate citizen. This is one of the reasons I don't drink and drive because I would open not only myself up to liability, but I would open up my company. So James, if you do something stupid in the state of Georgia and you get sued in the state of Georgia, your Wyoming ch corporation charge orders will not apply. They only apply in the state of Wyoming. And yet, yet you guys, you know, you want to do all this fancy stuff, but you don't understand the law. And jurisdiction and venue are huge. I'm going to share something with you. Um, I've, I've talked about this before. I hadn't talked about it in a while. Years ago, almost seven to be exact, I got a young lady pregnant and, you know, she came into me, she was pregnant and she was like, and I was like, so we had worked out a deal where I was going to take care of the baby during the day. That was our deal. And I went to the doctor visits with her and everything, but she wanted more from me than what I was willing to give. So she started using the child as a weapon. And then she's like, it's going to be my decision if she stays with me. And I was like, if she stays with you, and I was like, you're going to pay daycare. I'm not paying daycare. 
I am here, willing, and able to take care of my child. So long story short, she attacks me. She's going through postpartum depression. She attacks me and I call the police. And when I call the police, it clicked in her little brain that, oh, I cannot put my hands on him. I cannot talk to him anyway. And I made a mistake. I should have had her arrested because I could have had her arrested. So what did she do? She left the state. And once she left the state, I was fucked because she was in New York's jurisdiction where I had no rights. I would have to go to New York. I would have to sue her in New York. Georgia state law can't touch her once she left the state, even though she had an apartment and a job here, she lied to the judge and said, I moved. And once she said those words, Georgia was like, we can't do nothing to you. Can't touch you, can't do nothing to you. So that's a lesson in jurisdiction. If you have a corporation in another state and you do something stupid in your state, the protections of that corporation in the other state don't apply. Jurisdiction and venue are supreme. One state's like, it happens in, like say you're, you're in Alabama and you do something stupid in Alabama. Alabama law will supersede anything that you know you can have these corporations like I keep telling you guys and y'all keep wanting to like well I want a Wyoming LLC you know I want a Nevada LLC because it provides protection now I will tell you what does provide protection forming an incorporation which is, you know opens you up to double taxation but if you form your incorporation in the state of Delaware the state of Delaware like this is why UPS is in the state of Delaware and UPS is registered as a foreign agent in the state of Georgia. If you want to sue UPS, you must go to Delaware. You cannot sue UPS in Georgia. You must go to Delaware and be in the Delaware courts. That's why they set it up that way. And also because UPS is so many layers and complexity. They have a CEO, they have vice presidents, there, there's, there's, it's a big, big company. And you just cannot like, I'm going to sue UPS. I'm going to sue UPS. It's, it's really hard to sue UPS. So you would have to go to the state of Delaware because they're a big company and you just cannot like go down here. And it's like, I'm going to sue UPS. Also, let's talk about suing people. And many of you are worried about being sued. If you set up your corporation, like I tell you to, you will be immune from lawsuits. What, what, what am I drilling in your heads? Never do business with your holding company. If your holding company doesn't do business, it can't be sued. Because here's the thing. You just cannot like, I want to sue XYZ Corporation. You're, you're going to have to file what's called your complaint. And in your complaint, you're going to have to spell out why you're suing them. And if your complaint doesn't meet a litmus test, the judge is like, oh, it's going to throw it out of court. How do I know? Once again, I tried for four years to become a father to my child's life. And I actually sued her grandparents. This was my plan. I actually sued her in the Georgia state and sued them in the Georgia state because what I wanted to do was get the ability to get possession of their townhouse. And I wrote up my articles and everything because they were aiding and abetting her, right? And once we got to the Georgia court, they looked at the lawsuit and they moved it to family court. And at that point, I was dead. So I'm telling you guys, suing someone ain't as easy as you think it is. And once again, I'm going to teach you guys how to properly run your business. Because a lot of you are like, you know, I want to do an LLC in Wyoming. Why do you think you, why do you think you're going to be sued? What are you doing that's going to get you sued? I mean, yeah, there are frivolous lawsuits every day of the week, but what are you doing that's going to get you sued? Why are you so concerned about getting sued? Why? Please put that in the comments. Why are you so concerned about getting sued? Now, 
if I was running a trucking company and I had 20, 30 trucks on the road, I would be very worried about getting sued. You know why? Because there's a whole industry of attorneys who, who go ahead and sue trucking companies because the other day, yesterday, I was involved in an accident. This girl just pulled over and pulled in front of us and slowed down. And then yesterday, I also saw an accident. It was a strange, strange day. This, this black car, this truck was in the right, left lane and it pulled over and this truck clipped this bumper. I mean, this car clipped this bumper. The car was fucked up. I mean, the hood was bent all up. I mean, the car was messed up. The truck, the bumper was bent a little bit. That was about it. I was just like, God, man. So what are you doing that you're worried, so worried about being sued? Because first of all, to sue someone, all right, you must know how to do it, <laughs> okay? I've been in court 25 times. I am uh, 21 and I lost four. I won 21, I lost four. And there are certain rules of you in the court. Like if you, like first of all, if someone is gonna try to sue you, first of all, they got to know how to sue you, which means they got to get you served. And if you set up your corporation the correct way, it can be kind of hard to serve you. Because here, once again, going back to my situation, uh, once uh, she actually went to New York and she filed for child support, instantly filed for child support. A lot of strange stuff. I was like online looking in TurboTax and my information was already in there. So they were trying to figure out how much money I made so that she can get child support, even though she had took the child from the state of Georgia, moved to New York, and prevented me from being a father. So I went to child support court, I got served, and I showed up, and I fought my case, and I won, and I got her child support case dismissed. Now how did I do all that? I knew what to do, I knew what to say, I knew the law, I knew the law. So I got my child court, court case dismissed in 2014, which is seven years. So once again, she didn't know who she was dealing with because I had been in court like 25 times. I was really comfortable with court. And here's something else, guys. If you go to court and you've never been sued and you get, hello, and you open the door, sheriff, boom, you've been served. That's a scary moment. You're like, what does this mean? What's gonna happen? You don't know. Your mind is gonna go crazy. That's what happened to me the first time I got served. It was in East Point. And I was sitting there watching television, then someone was knocking on my door like a madman. It was a sheriff. He was, it's like, why are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> I see the guy in this uniform. Boom, you've been served. I'm like, what is this? And I couldn't sleep that night. So the first thing is you got to get you served. They got to write a complaint. Then they have to hire the sheriff or a process server. And here's the thing. Once again, going back to my situation, I had this chick served seven times, had her served, went to court and the court said invalid service because she would not identify and give her name. And I knew it was her, because was, she was served at the proper address. The process server actually had her dinner. It was her. But because she would not identify herself, it was called improper service. So I'm telling you, all you guys who are worried about being sued, first of all, what are you doing to be sued? What kind of corrupt business are you going to be starting? Because I hear all of this stuff. Like, James, I'm, you know, you can fact check me on this. But I'm telling you, if you do something stupid in the state of Georgia and you get sued in the state of Georgia, your Wyoming LLC will not protect you. It will not. Because Georgia state law is going to supersede uh, Wyoming state law because Georgia state law will have the jurisdiction and the venue. Jurisdiction is everything. Uh, when I was pleading my case in child support, I wrote in my papers, I live in the state of Georgia. I was not. You have no jurisdiction over me. And see, with child support, there is a federal child support law and there's a state child support law. 
and they were trying to use the federal because with federal, that's everywhere. But I, I like, no, 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 no. And I went in and I fought it and I, I, I ne and they, they tried, they actually put me on child support. I didn't pay it. They actually put me on child support. And essentially when I went to court, it was a session where, you know, and I was like, I don't have a job, which was true. I don't have a job. I told them I don't have a job. And they actually put me on child support for a hundred bucks a month. I did not pay. And then we went back to court and I got my case dismissed. And then the child support thing just came off my credit report maybe two years ago. Because they actively put me in the rears and went, you know, and it, once you get in the child support case, because I called them up and I was like, this case was dismissed. I don't have to pay child support. Take this crap off my credit report. So once again, James, like I'm saying, jurisdiction. If you're doing something in the state of Wyoming, yes, the charging orders and all that stuff will protect you. But if you get sued in another state outside of Wyoming, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply because of jurisdiction and venue. Go ahead and give you another example. When I was filing these stolen police courts, when the Sandy Springs police came to me, they were like, where is, you know, we established venue. I was like, they came here to this parking lot and they checked out the car. Okay, and the officer said, okay, venue's been established. We've got this. See, Sandy Springs police cannot arrest someone in Roswell. Let me say this again. The Sandy Springs police only have jurisdiction in Sandy Springs. They cannot go to Atlanta and arrest someone because they have no jurisdiction there because their jurisdiction comes from the city of Sandy Springs and they're embodied with that jurisdiction. They cannot go arrest someone in Decatur. They can see someone commit murder. They could do a citizen arrest, but they could not act in the official capacity as a Sandy Springs police officer. So once again, guys, you know, I got all these folks who, who want to start these because they feel that starting an LLC in one of these better states is going to protect them. And it's not. Only if you get sued in that state will it work. And this is why in some of the websites, they'll, they'll use teams like, well, you know, you can start a Wyoming LLC and, you know, if you get sued outside of Wyoming, these states, they may not apply Wyoming state law. See, guys, this, this, this thing you got to understand. Jurisdiction. I, I'm, I just gave you some great examples of jurisdiction because without the proper jurisdiction, um, you are not going to win. And in terms of suing a business, first of all, they got to have the proper complaint and the complaint must pass the litmus test. Like, let's say you threw in the lawsuit. I want to sue John because I don't like John. Judge, go throw that out. Just throw it out. But let's say you enter into a dispute where there's money involved. Like, I am suing XYZ Corporation because I spent $5,000 and I did not get my product or service. At that point, you have a valid lawsuit. Hey, I didn't get, I spent my 5,000, they kept my 5,000, they didn't give me what my product. You have a valid lawsuit. Uh, officially, an easier way to do would be do a chargeback and get your money back that way, but you could do a valid lawsuit against that company because you've entered into a contractual agreement and the company did not fulfill their, like give you an example. What happened with me? Because I know the law and I know how to speak to people. BMW, I have an X5 that the key would not activate the locks and sometimes it would not start the vehicle. And I was told that it was the CAS system, CAS system. The CAS system is what the key communicates with. The key communicates with the CAS system, opens up the locks, turns the vehicles on, and my mechanic tells me the CAS system goes through everything. The transmission is a, it's a nightmare if you get it wrong, right? And this is what BMW told me. And BMW, to put the CAS system in, removed my GPS kill switch, which I did not authorize. 
very, very key point. I did not authorize that. I knew that I didn't authorize that. Because when he sent me this, it's like we have to remove it. And I was like, no, 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 I need that, I need that. I gotta have that, bad things happen if I don't have that, right? And they removed it. And they were saying that they um, removed it because they had to put the cash system in. So they put it in. I go ahead and I pay for it and I take it out. And before I leave the BMW property, I pull over and I test it out to make sure it works. It doesn't work. So I immediately pull back in there, take it in there, and they're like, oh, it doesn't work. And then I get this message, we gotta take the GPS out thing out to work. I have this GPS kill switch in 15 BMWs. So I knew, I said, you know what, take it out. Take it out. And they took it out, and it still didn't work properly. So at this point, uh, I'm talking to the service advisor, and I said, look, I was told that it was the CAS system. It wasn't the CAS system, which means I didn't have to have the CAS system replaced. So I asked for three things. I only wanted one thing, but I asked for three. This is the art of negotiation. So what I want is a refund on that, and I want you to fix it for free because I did not authorize the removal of the GPS system because I told you at the beginning that the GPS system had nothing to do with it. It had nothing to do with it. And they called me back and it's like, we're going to fix it for free. Because I knew how to talk to them. Because once again, they're going to fix it for free. We're going to fix the pair. We're going to order a pair. And we're going to fix it. Because they messed up. And I knew the law. And I knew how to talk to them. And I'm getting this thing fixed without any additional money. Because I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not paying another $900 on top of the $1,800. You guys misdiagnosed this. And I, that's what I said. It was a misdiagnosis. And I started saying, you know, in a court of law, a misdiagnosis is a reason for a lawsuit. That's what I said. And I didn't think we would get to that because BMW, you know, global imports, um, they're, they're, they really don't want that kind of smoke. They really don't want that smoke. And because I was able to, I knew my rights. I knew my rights. And see, that this is one of the things. Many consumers don't know their rights. And I just wanted that, I just wanted to think fixed. Fixed, and I didn't want to pay any more money. So, you know, with the law and the finer points of jurisdiction, one of the things you guys have got to understand, jurisdiction is such a critical component. And like, this is what I tell you, it is best to file your LLC where you live. Because yes, Wyoming has these charging order protections, but the charging order protections only exist in Wyoming. They do not exist outside the state of Wyoming. Wyoming cannot force Georgia to say, hey Georgia, you need to adhere to our laws. And Georgia's like, no, 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 no. This is Georgia, we do what we want. And because Georgia is a sovereign state, they can do what they want and they can completely eh, ignore Wyoming state law and do what they want. This is why, you know, this whole, where I'm doing this Wyoming, it sounds good in theory, but the practical application is null and void. Because this is why, I'm, you know, what I'm teaching you guys is not gonna get you in trouble. And like, if you were to start a virtual company where you did not, you know, like my YouTube company and my online course company, I could, file my LLC and holding company in Florida and not pay any state income tax on that, even though I live in Georgia. I could get away with that. But because Mac Daddy Autos is a physical business, I couldn't get away with Mac Daddy Autos. So knowing the law and applying the law is very, 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 very important. So James, like as a corporate citizen, you need to govern yourself accordingly because if you're out, you and your wife, y'all go on the date night, and you get drunk and you hit someone and kill them and they sue you, your holding company, everything you own will be on the table because you hit someone and kill someone in the state of Georgia, not Wyoming. And also I have a feeling, I'm not sure about this, but if you did the same thing in Wyoming, I feel that that will penetrate their charging orders because see, Judges are strange creatures. And if you go ahead and do something heinous and the judge has the discretion to, to push out those charging orders and like, boom, 
depending upon the mood of the judge, it may not even protect you in Wyoming. Judges are strange. Like, once again, if you have the free time, I suggest that you go sit in on a trial. It is nothing like television. It is nothing like at television. Nothing like television. And you will see judges are people. And one of the things you guys got to understand is the law is a tricky beast. And if you don't understand how the law works and you don't understand the formalities of court, you could get fucked very easily, very easily. Like, I did not understand that when she left the state, I, was, I fought this for four years. I lost weight, I lost sleep. I was I, everywhere that I figured that I could get her back into court. I couldn't get her in court, gotta serve. But because she wouldn't identify herself, invalid service, improper service. Which means if you have improper service, even though you filed your lawsuit, your lawsuit cannot move forward because they weren't served. Give you another example. I saw this when I was in court because I went down to court. Like every now and then I go to court and watch it. Let's say you have a, a, credit, a creditor trying to sue you. If the attorney that is trying to sue you for your creditor cannot get you served, your case cannot go forward. The judge was like, um, did they get him served? And then, no, Your Honor, we didn't get him served. He's like, uh, you want a continuance or I'm going to dismiss this case? Boom, just like that. So this is one of the issues. Like, I, I give you another legal thing. Uh, with the people who made off with my cards and didn't want to return them and was ignoring me, I had to send what was called the demand letter. Now, this is where the law can work in your favor if you know the law. I send a demand letter that's on their address, right? If the address is funky, then I have the option to send them a copy of the demand letter through text or email. And at that point, we can go ahead and activate the stolen car uh, report. I don't have to wait five days because they gave me a funky address. They made it impossible for me to communicate with them. So I've learned, like I said, you know, I've learned a lot um, with the demand letters. And like I said, um, once again, James, if you don't conduct yourself as a corporate citizen and avoid doing silly stuff, your Wyoming LLC will not protect you at all. It won't. And you know, if you want to spend the money and talk to an attorney, he will tell you the same thing. And this is why I tell you guys, you know, create your LLC, your holding company in the state you live in, especially if you have a physical business. UPS, multi-billion dollar corporate, did not move their LLC to Georgia. They filed as a foreign entity because they wanted to leave their, their not their LLC, their incorporation. They wanted to leave their incorporation in the state of Delaware because there they have all of these protections and because of the way that UPS is set up. If you want to sue UPS, you got to go to Delaware. You got to go to Delaware. You got to go to Delaware state courts, which is a totally, and also, it's gonna be hard, like, let's say a UPS driver, one of their drivers is drinking on the job and he hits someone. That's a massive lawsuit. That's a massive lawsuit. So let's say the UPS driver hits someone in the state of Georgia and an attorney goes ahead and bonds UPS to the state of Georgia. Delaware protections don't apply. They don't apply. And what UPS would do was settle to get that resolved. They would settle. They wouldn't even go to court. They would just settle to get rid of it to make it go away. Because actually, uh, I'm going to do some research on this. Let me see. I may do a little research on this now. Let's see. How many times has UPS been sued? UPS facing multiple employee lawsuits. UPS, uh, now this is funny, UPS is not just one company, it's a collection of companies. There's UPS, 
There's UPS Supply Chain Solutions. So one of the things you got to do is to know exactly, and this is why the holding company strategy is so powerful. If you have a company and on the Secretary of State, it's going to say that your holding company owns this company. So anyone that does a just a curious check, they will know that this company is owned by a holding company, right? Well, they can only sue the company that they had a business exchange with. Yes, the holding company owns this company. They cannot move up the food chain and sue the holding company because the holding company did not do business with them. The holding company is indemnified against any lawsuit that's happening at the operating company level. So if you set up your holding company correctly and you set up your operating cor company correctly and you don't pierce the corporate veil yourself, which means you will have a separate personal checking account for your, yourself and separate checking accounts for your business. I've got like 30 checking accounts. I got one checking account for personal, which I deposit, my direct deposit goes into, and I have all these business accounts. Everything is separated because if you don't separate it, there is no distinction between you and your business. You have pierced your corporate veil yourself. So once again, fact check me on this, James. Go ahead and spend the money and you will see that I'm 100% correct because once again, all of these esoteric maneuvers are unnecessary if you're running a proper business. It's just unnecessary. But once again, a Wyoming LLC has no power if your business is in the state of Georgia and you get sued in the state of Georgia. It has no power, none whatsoever. And once again, this is why I don't drink and drive. You know, long story short, I used to work in the emergency room and I have seen what happens to people who are hit by drunk drivers. I've seen people literally die. I've literally went in, there was this one lady, she was in and out of it. She had um, two broken legs, contusion, internal bleeding. And I was talking to this chick and five minutes later, she was dead. She died in trauma one. She just died because it was like burr, burr, code one, code blue, code blue. And then everyone runs in there because she's uh, having a she's having a cardiac arrest on the table. She's shaking and she dies because a drunk driver hit her. And that has left such an impression on me. I never drink and drive. I don't ever want that on my soul that I actually took a drink and I killed somebody. I don't want that on my soul. And as a corporate citizen, I understand how the law works. So I don't do stupid things to endanger, to endanger my corporate uh, situation. It's gonna be so, like, like I just told you, I had someone sue me for child support and because I knew the law, I was able to get that case dismissed. I was able to get that dismissed. People are like, oh, child support, child support. One of the things, now, if I had her arrested, I would have got full custody. And see, she was a teacher, and I knew if she got arrested, her, she would lose her teaching license. You cannot be getting arrested for domestic abuse and keep your teaching license. So, I mean, I struggled because I was like, All right, I don't want to arrest her. I mean, it was, you know, and, it, and you don't have a lot of time to make these decisions. But if I had her arrested, I would have had full custody of my daughter. And that, like, I did not expect her to leave the state. She left the state two days later, because uh, essentially when this goes down, social workers come into play because the social worker has to contact her. And since I was the victim, they contacted me. And the contact me is like, we're having a hard time reaching her. Do you know? And it's like, uh, I talked to her. It's like, she left the state. She left the state. And once again, once she left the state, I was fucked. I didn't know it at the time. So I'm telling you, jurisdiction is everything. And a lot of you are trying to play these fancy corporate games, and you're pretty much going ahead and set up an LLC in another state that will not protect you if a certain set of circumstances occur. Once again, James, if you're in the state of Wyoming and you do something stupid, yes, charging orders and all this protect. But if you're outside the state of Wyoming, no, 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 no. All right, hopefully this helped y'all. Hopefully we cleared up some stuff because 
the, the corporate papers, what I'm trying to teach you, it's not going to get you in trouble. And your best protection is to run a proper business and not to, you know, be fair and honest with your customers and do the right thing. That's your best protection. I've been in business 23 years. I've never been sued. Never been sued in 23 years. And I, at one point, I had a business that had trucks, had trucks on these Georgia highways, picking up storage units. And none of my trucks ever hit anyone or caused an accident. I have never been sued in 23 years of doing business. So if you're like freaking out that you're going to get sued, what are you doing? What are you doing, baby? What are you doing? All right. So with that, we're getting close to the price increase of the corporate papers where I teach you how to set up a holding company. I teach you how to set up an operating company. But more importantly, I teach you how to set up your business. On a scale of one to 10, one being the least important, 10 being the important, compared to the, the, the setting up of your business and getting customers, the holding company stuff's a one. It's a one. And a lot of y'all are mesmerized and spellbound by the holding company as if the holding company and operating companies gonna put money in your pocket without a business. A holding company without a revenue ain't shit. It ain't nothing. So if you wanna learn all of that, holding company, operating company, corporate banking, and more importantly, how to set up a business. This is coming from someone that made $120,000 last month. I made 120,000. I am actually, I, I, I actually screenshotted that. So this is not coming from someone who ain't making no money. This is, I actually make money and I will teach you the things you need to do to make money in the corporate papers. And you're looking on that two to three year journey. It ain't gonna be quick. You're not gonna do it in three weeks. You're not gonna do it in a month. It's just not happening. But if you're like 25, and you get on this journey, by the time you're 28 to 30, you can have a million dollar business. And from age 30 to, let's say 30 to 80, your life is gonna be fantastic. Because you will have money, you will have power, and you will have control. I'm here to tell you. So use promo code AUGUST, the link is below, and I will see you guys in the next one.